<clears throat> Why don't we start okay. then record? Well, it's all right. We're going to start at the same time simultaneously. You're going to call the meeting to order as chairman of the board. Jeez. But this is the mayor's meeting. I know. We're, no, we're right. providing convenient. Couples. Is the mayor attending? Ah, uh -huh, yes, she is. It looks like. Okay. You're off. Hi, uh, everyone. Hi. 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 Is that the agenda for today? Yeah, you have. Yeah, one more. Yep. Does Becky need something too? Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. 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 Open it with a chairperson's statement. This meeting is being <clears throat> recorded by the Board of Assessors. If any other persons present are doing the same, you must notify the chairperson at this time. The chair on the Board of Assessors deserves the right to remove to have any person, persons with profanity, threats, or any continued disruption in the meeting. So, it's called the meeting to order and uh, the roll call of. We have Board of Assessors. Chuck Green, aye. Yeah, we're all here. Jim Geisman, aye. Randall Austin, present. Uh, I'm also here. And then uh, you want to record the guest. I will. Yeah. Um, and I turned off the thing where it just shows people's name on there. So is somebody, do... is uh, the three people there in the waiting room? Uh, I don't know about the waiting room, but there are three people in the meeting. Um, this room, me, and Stephanie Duplos. Okay. Max, no, I know who's coming. Um, and Stephanie's not showing up because uh, she's not sharing video. Okay. And I'm not sharing video either, so that's why I'm not showing up. Great. Max, no, but even if you're not sharing a video, shouldn't be showing up. I changed the setting on that thing because I hate when it has my name and what's up there when I'm not showing video. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay, and uh, we have previous minutes attached. I I would like to make a motion to approve. I second. Great. Go. Favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. And uh, what about public comment? I move we open public comment. I'll second. All in right. favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, so. We're on to new business. Well, I think we should give the public an opportunity, since we do have members of the public. Oh, that's right. Part of the meeting yeah. mm -hmm. to have an uh, opportunity to, to have a statement. So we have open public comment. And if there's someone from the public that would like to make a comment at this time, please let us know. That's why I think we need to see who's. OK, well, yeah, that's you can okay. change the setting if you yeah. like. All right. Is that in view, or is that Yeah, it's in view. Just, just so we know who's, the who's connected. Well, they put their hand, there's a yeah, yeah. 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 hand signal. Mm -hmm. It took me almost six so months. You're the only that one that is uh, <clears throat> with us from the public. Is there anything that you'd like to say at this time? I see that you're unmuted, but I can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh, there you go. Um, Hi, Stephanie Duplo, Chapman Street Review. No, I'm just listening in. I'm, I really like it when you put public comments at the end so that I can, you know, try to mull around some ideas for these with growth, you know, come up with maybe how to either save or save some money or find creative ways to get some influx of uh, growth. Um, and I'll keep sharing what I uh, come across that throughout the city when I'm driving around. Okay, well, we'll do public comment at the end as well. We have that agenda that way. Yeah, we do have the meeting set up that way. So we'll open it again at the end and you'll have another opportunity. I move we close public comment. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So uh, new growth develop. I, I think uh, Jenny may be yeah. take over. We said um, we were going to start now with our current um, uh, our Department heads. So I'm going to start with our with Amy and then Eric and then uh, uh, 
Marika becomes an Andy Andy. But you'll be thick. <laughs> okay? Is that okay? Alphabetically? I'm fine with that. It's Thank not, you. we're saving the best for last. Don't tell you. Okay? All right. A, 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 uh, if you have anything that's happening in your wing. Um, I don't believe I have anything that's happening in my wing that this group isn't already aware of, but what I would flag for folks is in our housing study, which we just completed, we do have a page where we list all of the upcoming um, developments that are in the pipeline. That's not new growth immediately now, but there are several of those that will be new growth over the it will next, help us to forecast. Yeah, over the next few years. So that's a good um, metric to just keep on the horizon. Okay. Thank you. Eric, what's happening in planning? Kind of similar to what Amy said, um, I think you're all aware of the current zoning amendments going through the process, but there is um, on my own webpage of the city's website, current projects under planning and development that lists all the current zoning amendments going through the process. Uh, cluster development is one of them. Uh, the other is have to do with housing but there's just relatively some minor amendments. Um, for example, multifamily ordinance limits the number of units per building to six. We're proposing to increase it to 10, no, actually 24, and we're proposing to increase that to 50, and then the number of units that a single entry going from six to 10. Minor amendments like that, but all related to housing. Uh, the big one is the ADU, it's a new law passed by Governor Haley. Mm. And, um, already done the zoning amendments to meet that law. I'll probably have to have our attorney review it to make sure we're meeting the law, but I think I captured everything. Two key points on that one is that single family, any zoning district that allows a single family use currently now has to allow both attached and detached ADUs by right. And you cannot prohibit the landowner from renting both off, both units mm -hmm. out. Our current ordinance um, says that you have to live in one of them, either the ADU or the primary structure. The new law says you can rent them both out. That's significant. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. So those are the zoning amendments going, kind of going through the process right now. Um, I have another question about that. The laws that Maura Healy signed, does that include changing from a super majority to uh, a just majority, simple majority for passing of zoning amendments. I did not. Um, that, that's a possibility as part of the law. Um, it, it wasn't brought out in any of the stuff that dealt with housing or the MMA or planners. That, was, that wasn't listed, but I'd have to go through the law to see if that is part of it. I'm not aware of that. That'd be significant. I heard that it just went to that, and I thought, because it, it's very hard to get a zoning something passed here because you need nine. But a simple majority would be, would be significant. I can look that up and uh, yeah. send a group an update on that, see if that is part of it. Yeah, because that they would go through. There's no restriction on owner occupancy? No. And and it's by. Um, that's what do you mean? You feel like that's right. not good? I feel like that's good, yeah. Why do you say that? Well, because. You know, people will buy up properties and they'll rent them out. And uh, you know what happens to rental properties? What's that? Well, unless the uh, landlord uh, invests in keeping the property up, the properties uh, degrade. And uh, if they are forced to make any changes, um, it gets passed through as rent to two people now. Well, the person would have to sell their property and they so I have two things about that. I, I I hear what you're saying about that, but one of the things about building an ADU is it's very expensive because you've got to, it has to have everything in it. It has to have a kitchen, yeah. bathrooms, etc. So it's not like you can simply do that and you have to add it to your own plot of land. Now when we were putting that ADU when we were proposing it initially to begin with, I did call around to all our neighboring towns. Um, Montague was the one that had had the most. And it was like 90% of them were built for people and their family, people's families, because, um, you know, I've, 
always been a homeowner until now I'm in a condo. Yeah. But I owned a, you know, it's a quarter acre. I thought I would have done that for someone in my family. I would not have put something on and gone to the trouble of building a whole like little mini house in the backyard for someone if, personally. But, um, but I, I guess the, the whole thing with it at the time was, you know, life as we know it will change because every one of them will become a rental property. But I think wherever it was, if I owned a home, I would be building that or not as I wish. I, I'm glad that it's not just limited to family. Some people will definitely do it for rental and that's their prerogative. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe I wasn't clear. I'm not concerned about current owners. Right. Current owners can do what they want on their property. Right. And I have no problem with that. But if an owner sells, right. both parts, you know, both items go. Right. And if they are sold to somebody who is buying this as an investment property, mm -hmm. it, it's the same problem we have with our current housing stock where uh, they are non-owner occupied. Uh-huh. And they go downhill very quickly. And if you if you uh, treat them as uh, non-owner occupied, they get taxed at a, a different rate that gets passed along in the rents. Mm. Well, if and the concern, you know, the concern I have is that the that not the current owners, but the future owners mm. are are going to. Um, create some problems as far as non-owner occupied rentals. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, so I, I have two comments on that. Um, first, mm -hmm. um, it's not taxed at a different rate unless we passed a residential exemption, which we so far it looks like are not going to do this year. And, um, and the reason we weren't going to do that is because like you said, we didn't want mm -hmm. the non-owner occupied to pass down additional taxes, higher rent. But to that point, um, what, although I don't want, and nobody wants the whatever Black Rocks to come in and buy everything up and so forth, as, as we've sort of yeah. been worried about. In the meantime, as Amy's um, housing study showed, we have a very significant um, lack of housing, in particular, lower income and medium income housing. And if we keep saying we don't want rentals, um, that problem is going to get worse. No, that that, but that that isn't my issue. My my issue is, you're you're looking at things as they are now. Let's go ten years down the road. This is a much more robust community, and then and then we do pass an ordinance where are we a residential we, exemption residential exemption. Then you're you're in this rental problem where any any changes in taxes or improvements or anything like that gets passed along to the renters. Yeah, that's just, that's a way future thing. Whereas the housing problem is a very now problem. But the, well, I think the, regardless of like yes. it or not, the, the that, governor has passed the law. So that's right. it is what it is. So, so, so that's it, not a debate that Greenfield can have, but we can no. talk about how to better work with our landlords to, you know, step up there. Yeah, I, care I, I, the I think, yeah, but I think that that is, a current issue that we ought to address, irrespective of ADUs and you know other. Sure, I'm just structures. making the point that, no, no, that's fine. that I love a good debate, but the governor has that's true. said right. what the law the is, is so <laughs> <laughs> that one's a little out of our hands. On <laughs> no, that, 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 that's yeah. just fine. I I did not. First of all, I don't know about I don't know the details of the law other than what I've heard, and if. There's no owner occupied restrictions. There's no. So be it. But I'm I'm just saying that if there is no owner occupied restriction, then we have all these downstream issues to deal with. Mm -hmm. And the the issue that you just raised about renters, uh, you know, uh, people that own rental properties, uh, maintaining them. That's a live issue right now, mm -hmm. irrespective of the future relative to ADUs. Right. So how do yeah. we deal with that then? Yeah, exactly okay. the point I was making. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Randy, you had your hand up first. Did you? <clears throat> um, I did, and I was not sure whether or not here is the right place to talk about it. But 
When you, I have seen here in Greenfield where uh, I guess I'm going to have to look into it a little more closely, but it appears as though an accessory dwelling unit was was uh, put onto a house and then they reclassified it as a two family house. Mm -hmm. When you classify, when you go from single family to two family, it drops your value significantly. And so um, I, I think on our end, we're going to have to talk about how we're going to. Uh, make sure that it's classified properly, that it's a single family home with an in-law apartment as opposed to a true two family uh, home that is like a side-by-side, -side, uh, you know, a conventional two family home. So if it were done unpro improperly, because that's not what it was, um, can it be reclassified? Um, I think so, yeah, because I don't know how it got to that classification in the first place. And usually that's something that Okay. Mark is involved. And so um, I'm going to have to bring up or find that example that we have. Okay. So this is an example just so you'll, you'll be on your left foot because you walked in. So we're not going to ask you that, but today, that's <laughs> yet the next step. I apologize for being late. I was tied up out in the field. This is okay. This is all right. Um, you're, you're here, and I'm delighted that you're here. Um, so this, I just want to tell you, this is not something that will take up. To, this is about a place that had a, um, it had an accessory dwelling unit within and it was about the value of the value of the parcel if it's right because they changed it from a 101 a single family home to a two family now but it's really i don't think it's a true two family home it's more of a single family that had an in-law apartment added on an accessory dwelling unit as opposed to it being a true two family home that it's two homes that are of the same size uh, and not one is dominant and the other is subordinate, I suppose. So how would he know? And I'm, I'll get to you next, okay, because I saw your hand up. Mm -hmm. How would he know? How would Mark Snow know? And, that... and so that's why I was reluctant to bring it up. Because no, no, it's okay. It's, it's just a gray area. It's, and it's, it's something a very good question, though, because when we, had, when we had an accessory dwelling unit, and if it was a detached, it was a special permit. Right, I remember that. And the other ones were allowed by right. A within or attached are are allowed by right. So what format does a person have to go for? They need to go for a building permit. Is that correct? Yeah, they, either way, a either way. permit would be a permit would be a false. Right, because they never come to you for that, correct? Other than the special permit for detached. Do they, have you ever had anybody come to you and ask about doing one within or attached? No, those are by right. I mean, they ask about it, but I never follow through. I just give them okay. basic information. Yes, it's a lot by right. So the minute that you hear about this, be part of our new growth story. This is why we're meeting. The minute someone calls and asks you about it, okay? Like they're asking, like they're going to do an attached. This I'm asking you from henceforward with if you could alert your teammates, that's why we're here, okay? Because this is revenue. Um, because it's going to make a difference. If that goes to a true family, you need to tip off Mark because otherwise we're just spinning our wheels coming to these meetings for nothing. This is, you know what I'm saying? Like this is, I don't mean that for nothing, but this is why, we, this is why we're coming so we don't miss any of those things. So you need to alert him because he wouldn't have known that. He just sees somebody's going to do an addition because going to a two family, I didn't actually realize that makes it less valuable. Yeah. Who knew? If you change a class to from 101 right. to 104, it, there's a significant reduction. Okay. And Randy, the, the reason for that is market based, not that there's some magical adjustment, but you say um, we have found in the past from the sales data that multifamilies sell for less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so now so you. So it's built in, right, to the. Yeah. So it's built into this. So that's fascinating. So you had your hand up on the same issue. Yeah, it's you know, yeah, different issue previously, and then another question on this issue. So, in t the laws of twenty twenty two that went through, there was a portion that said that if you have a zoning amendment that has to do with housing, then it is a simple majority, and that passed a couple of years ago. It's not under this new governor's housing law. It, it was passed two years ago, saying that any zoning amendment that has to do with housing only takes a simple majority now in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Any zoning amendment that just has to do with housing. Yes. Wow. That was like 20, the law of 2022, I believe. Huh. Um, the other question I had, because people ask that, and I don't know what answer to give them. I mean, if you have a single family home, somebody 
and it's by right an ADU either attached or within, I've been saying it's a two family because the, the, our ordinance doesn't say what a two family is. It doesn't say it has to be equal size. There is no definition. Exactly. But there's definitely a significance and value. So maybe that's how the one that I'm seeing as an example happened because it's like, geez, why did this go down so much in value? Because it's sort of sticking out uh, from one year to the next. So, and so it was the significance. Okay, they added to it, but yeah. the value went down. And so, well, why? And so, that's like I said, it's more of an assessing question or maybe something that we need to talk about because it came yeah. up with another question for me. If they're going to build on an in law apartment, are they going to the planning board? Do they need approval for that before they just go ahead and do it? Or they just go and get to mark and get a permit? Well, and then was doing it. within and attached, they only went directly to the building permit. If okay. it's detached and they need detached. a special permit, but now no longer, but up until the new law, they needed to go through a land board, the zoning board, RC planning board in this case. Yeah, so then you would know about it. Exactly. So am I hearing that I should be advising people that mm -hmm. ask about duplexes and ADUs, <laughs> that give them the new information that this could lower your assessed value? Now. Well, so be I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't mm -hmm. want that to happen, but I'm just saying that's a significance and I think it needs to be looked at so that it's getting properly adjusted because it, you know it, it seems to me like it's a different type of two family home it's not like i i have an in-law apartment in my home it's a colonial but they built this addition off the side for the previous owners uh you know mother-in-law or whatever the case was and so that to me well my you know colonial you know it's not a, a real two family home uh, you know, I had a renter in there before. It's great for, we had a German exchange student. Um, how does that community assess it? In, in, well, it and there's also two family homes aren't allowed in Montgomery. And exactly. so this is funny because he was the assessor and somehow he was able to build one on his house, but no one else is supposed to. So I don't know what happened, but I came in after the fact. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's not the only one in town. I do know. Because I haven't been advising people in that way. I've just been simply advising on the permanent requirements. Yeah, and that's why it's really more of a discussion with other assessors to say, hey, when... You know, this is what I was going to ask you. I was going to ask our board of assessors, and I'll go to you next. Our board of assessors, if if you would each take like seven or eight or ten municipalities and find out, just because you would say Randy time, you are always trying to help Randy, and you could look up and see how they... Value them. Is that okay if I ask? I you? can. There's other ways to get it. Oh, is that a simple so way to be on the association, and I can put out on the blog. Okay. All right. That's fine. Well, then never mind. I'll even say even also them. within um, you know, we have the Mass Assessors Association, but we also have the Franklin County Assessors Association. So it's okay. So I'm going to that to talk you. to local assessors and then to I'll see how they're doing because that. But we should just just alert your your other department heads. Um, Chuck. Chuck was next. So um, two things. Um, first, um, I recall that when we want to add new value, it never subtracts a drop in value. So even if somebody adds um, an apartment to their home, whether we call it an ADU or a two-family, whatever, point. that even if the value of the house drops by half, it doesn't reduce new growth by one cent. Because new growth only goes up or goes down. Right. Um, and the second point is, Again, I want to go back to Amy's housing study. We have a huge housing problem, and we should not fight that we want new growth, but we want housing, and it's got to be one or the other. No, it's it's got to be both. And so we need to not worry. We need to try and add housing. Mm -hmm. That's the, like, to me, that's the overarching thing. And I know that we're here to find new growth revenue. Right. But I think by adding housing, we're not going to drop new growth, and we might add it depending on the situation. Um, and then I just also want to go back to, and Mark, if you can validate this, um, there's no, if, whether something is considered an auxiliary, auxiliary du dwelling unit or not, if you add another kitchen to your home, now you have two homes. Yes, and I was going to talk about that a little bit after everybody got their right. questions answered because <laughs> right. uh, I wanted to clarify it. You want me to do that yeah. now? Go ahead. Okay. So from the building department, we look at two two sets of regulations. One is the city ordinance, which is the zoning ordinance. Mm -hmm. It's completely separate from the building code. 
And that's a lot of people don't separate those, but you really do have to separate those. Zoning is a local ordinance uh, that's been adopted by the city. And then you have the state building code, which is the building code throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The zoning does <clears throat> address ADUs. Building code does not. If you have an independent a unit where it provides uh, facilities for cooking, sleeping, and living, that is considered a dwelling unit, its own dwelling unit. Not an ADU. Building code doesn't classify it as an ADU or an in-law apartment. It's not that. It's a, its own separate dwelling. dwelling. So that would become a two-family. And if you did that, if you uh, added one from a two-family and you went to a three-family, I know that in the zoning ordinance, it says three-family now are allowed by right in many of the residential zoning districts. People think that because they have a three-family, it's classified as a three-family, not a multi-family, that they don't have to put sprinkler set. Again, you have to keep the zoning and the building code separate. Uh, building code, if it's three families and up, that's a multi-family, and you'll be putting in sprinklers. One and two families are exempt from sprinklers right now. So you really have to keep the zoning and the building code separate. And the ADU's language is not in the building code. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. So does that clarify? That's mm -hmm. fascinating. Yeah, totally clarifies. It's That's fascinating, but the it. person is adding a kitchen. Is they're adding a kitchen and a living space, and it costs money to build a kitchen. Is that not true? It does. Sure. And what we tell people when they come to the office and say that they'd like to add a kitchen because of their in-laws, we explain to them the situation that you're creating an, an, another dwelling unit. Even though your in-laws are living there, you're creating another dwelling unit. And yes, you can do that because the building code does not limit how many kitchens are allowed or permitted in a one family. You can have more than one kitchen, but we make sure that we document it that it's for an in-law so that they don't get a false sense that it's a separate dwelling. Okay. So, does that make sense? Yeah, that is rather interesting. I, know, well, it's, it's, I mean, it's like tough. if he had, if his, I asked him about that when I was on planning board. I'm like, I want to take that building code. You can lift it. You know, there's two different building codes. I think you told me they're huge books with all the codes that they have in a building. You know, you know what I'm like. I probably read it, but um, he said it was too big to take home. That there were two big building codes. He has to follow the building codes. So, do you have a question on the same thing? Um, yeah, I, I just want to understand. You can have, um, and you can have a separate dwelling unit. And it has to have cooking. Yeah. It's got to have a separate bathroom. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. separate plumbing. Okay. Uh, it, what do you mean by plumbing? No. Well, I mean, you know, it's got to have another bathroom. It's not separate well, yes. plumbing, though. You, you yeah, no, no, no. I, 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 I spoke. I, okay. Now, it does not deal with whether it's a single entrance or multiple entrances. Is that correct? No. A dwelling unit is required to have two, two exits, yeah. two entrances, two exits. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what happens when somebody has an in-law apartment mm -hmm. that they convert into uh, an office where they may see patients? Where they see patients? Yeah. You know, doctor buys a house and gets rid of the... the I'm, I'm, so it depends on the zone. So it unit. depends on the zone. You can't do that in every yeah. zone. Yeah, it's, it's right. being used in yeah. a different way. Okay, so, so that that is a zoning something. And you have to make sure that that is allowed in the zone that you are in. And okay. if you have a question about that, you can uh, follow up with Eric first. Okay. And if someone is do that, doing that and it's not allowed in that zone, as we've had other things that came for that we learned at a Sesame meeting, then we go to Mark and drop a dime. Well, hopefully local, yeah, Don's uh, Mark to say, hey, this is what I'm doing. And he goes and makes sure everything is up to code and then tips me off that, hey, it's no longer a two family. Now it's a mixed use. Okay, but my but in that case, you know, I just bought I just bought a house that has an in law apartment that I'm not going to use as an in law apartment, a anymore, 
or B, I'm going to convert it into an office. If you can. That's a change of use. Mm -hmm. That's a change of use. Technically. What, is it, what does it do to the land use? Special, you need a yeah. special permit for the change of use. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I was saying is that then Mark would let me know, or I would find out through that permit process mm -hmm. that now it's getting converted okay. and I would change the, the class once I had confirmed with Mark and he gave me the okay. So there's two different ways to do the business, what you're talking about. It's so, yeah. either a home occupation. Yep. Or could be a business commercial use. Sure. So it depends on where they're located, yeah. what type of business, how much area in the home is being occupied for the business. Okay. Uh, because you can have certain home occupations. In mm -hmm. Okay. So it's just a conversion issue. But if you do have the public coming, then technically that, that's, that's, that's a different. public building. Yep. Right. And there's yes, there's to definite the... parameters. I'm going to take Aaron first. I know that you actually had your hand up first, That's so okay. you had opportunities to speak. Right. Go ahead. Let's go, Aaron. I know I've been here five weeks, so I should know everything by now. And this is a basic question: Are there different state and local building codes? And uh, building codes. Building codes. There's one statewide building code. Yes. yes. Okay. It's the state of Massachusetts building code mm -hmm. for commercial, yes. which is any building other than a one and two family dwelling okay. in its accessory dwellings. Then there's the Massachusetts residential building code, mm -hmm. which applies to one and two family dwellings in their accessory structures. Okay. Okay. That saves me a lot of Googling. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. A, a question for Randy, uh, this ADU issue detached, is that going to require a new land use code? Um, I don't know. And that's why I said it's really a discussion with other assessors with the assessors right. association to figure out exactly what we're gonna do because when I when I do that class code change from a one oh one to one oh four, it the tables are, you know, the pricing is different. And so in certain circumstances and the one that I came across, it's like, okay, not at this house that's in this nice part of town. You know, that has this other accessory dwelling unit. It's not really, in my opinion, a two family. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, it's someone that's, you know, had built this on just for their in law or whatever the case may be. And it's not, a, it shouldn't receive that decreased value because, in my opinion, when it sells, it's not going to sell, it's going to sell for much more than the new value. So and we should think very, very value. carefully about that. And I'll even help you make up a new code. No, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm only kidding. But um, that is a very important issue because that's actually the drift of the meeting. Okay, that's the purpose of this, not the philosophical discussion about housing, which is a very good one. Um, you know, and people feel all differently about it one way or another, and it's America. Um, but but adding like having two things on one parcel is whatever that is let's, let's one call one lexington and find out what they did okay did you have something no i want to go to mark on something sure. oh you lexington had mass Le huh lexington mass yeah i was kidding yes lexington is very affluent community that's what i was like let's call lexington because i know right. the assessor there yes i said let's call lexington and yeah. find out what they did. i know what they did to get around the affordable housing Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. They because you have to have a certain we have more than enough, actually, over our percentage of affordable housing here. Lexington did not. And they were extraordinarily creative. So let's find out what they do with their yeah, okay. use, which I think they use for their excess for their affordable. It'd be yeah. fascinating. Go oh, ahead. right. Hmm. Last one on this. We're going to go. We're going to go on after this. Go ahead. So. Um... As you were saying, once something becomes a multifamily, its value goes down. Um, of course, that might change as sales change and with all these things. Um, but what I was wondering, um, normally when we see a permit saying that there's an addition, um, we that's new growth for us. Mm -hmm. um, and we do that based on the value of the permit oftentimes. And I understand that you're talking about growth. But I'm also, as the assessor, concerned about preserving our value. Mm -hmm. So it's great if we get new growth, but if I'm losing that value too, that I don't feel it's appropriate, mm -hmm. I want to react accordingly. So, so, you, so you wouldn't you wouldn't book it as new growth based on the permit? No, I'd, I'd book it as new growth, yes. But I'd hate to lose the extra value in the meantime. Because that drives the... So okay, they, they put on, yeah, if they're losing $70,000 worth of value and they just spent fifty. 
to put on the accessory drawing unit. It yeah, well, make sense. The, the point is, we need the new growth to we, increase we, our revenue yeah, ceiling. Yeah, we don't care if the if no, the value goes down. Yes, we do. Yes, do. No, I, 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 just, I do care. I just, okay. I totally no, disagree with you. We do care. Okay. Um, I, I, we cannot run a city like that. We have things that we need to do. If everybody here wants to have their jobs and the yes, jobs right. of their friends, we need to do that. We need to not only have new growth. We need to. The values need to be. Right. Yeah. Okay. 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 So um, I want to go to Mark and then to you because mm -hmm. this is you find this fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we were talking about the uh, parcel that you brought up to uh, to my attention. Mm -hmm. It was a building permit um, mm -hmm. on. Uh, uh, I'm not going to give the number on Well Street with a the what the permit was listing. We were talking about not missing any new growth. You told me a little bit about it, and I alerted uh, Mark to that, who actually brought that permit with him today, because indeed this was sort of sounded like it was something that wasn't that that much, and then upon inspection it had mini splits, et cetera. So why don't you tell a little bit? From your end, okay. and then we'll go on. So, so that um, 123 wells. Well, it mm -hmm. yes. Oh, was I not supposed to say? Yes, that, that was fine. It's okay. Perfect. It's all right. <laughs> it's okay. It's it's uh, so the property it's public record. That's true. I was that mm -hmm. that yeah. So the property that in question did pull a permit out uh, back. 2022 or 2023, um, the building is vacant, uh, and I didn't get the permit itself, so I don't have oh, all okay. the permit that's information it. here. But um, so there was work going on. Mm -hmm. So this project has been ongoing for quite some time. Um, the building is vacant. Uh, the permit expired. Rachel who is our new local inspector working on vacant and foreclosing properties. Uh, this property came on our radar because of, of the permit and the extent of permit and the building is vacant. So she stopped and she found that there was a lot more work going on than what was permitted. <clears throat> so as a result of that, she issued a stop work order to the owner and to the contractor, uh, which is right here. <clears throat> that was done on August 21st of this year. Mm -hmm. So that's the stop work order. Mm -hmm. Stop work order remains in place. Uh, on 9-3, Rachel did a site visit with the owner. Um, and this is her letter of acknowledgement for the site visit and what her and her owner discussed. So obviously this is a substantial renovation. He's actually done structural work. He put in, he took out one beam, put in a beam, but it was undersized. There was deflection in the floor system. So he had to take that beam out and he had to put in another beam. So, and this was a homeowner who doesn't live there, mm -hmm. who actually used a licensed contractor's license, knowingly, uh, to pull a permit out to do all this work. Um, so right now, because of the extent of structural work that's being done, Rachel has requested a uh, structural engineer to be involved uh, for design. So the owner did submit a permit application the other day, and Rachel told them that the information that was provided is not accurate and mm -hmm. or adequate. So he's gone back to get more information. So I understand this comes on your radar mm -hmm. for whatever reason, um, but it was on our radar too, mm -hmm. for multiple reasons. Mm -hmm. And when the mayor was talking to me this morning, when uh, you know I told her that Rachel was all over this, she was very pleasantly surprised to think oh, that right. we were on it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, right, because that was before I had started thinking up. It was before, you know, you're already, it's August and you guys are already doing something. So here is the initial complaint detail report from Rachel. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, a couple of pages. So it's very extensive. Small font. So <laughs> you can't read it from there. So right. <laughs> so, but what I'm saying is that this is this is a situation that takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Um, and with the owner not living there, using mm -hmm. a contractor who isn't always on the job site, makes it even more challenging and difficult. Um, but she did, which is pretty clear to the contractor. Now he is on the hook for everything. Yeah. Okay. Good. That makes sense. So, oh, right. And even though, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. just want to let you know this is just one example of, yeah, and it came on my, that we're on that mm -hmm. people aren't aware that we do behind the scenes. Right. Mm -hmm. That is very time consuming. Yeah. Right. And so, and you were on top of it too. That's great. So, my concern was is that I'd gone there, uh, contacted by the owner because of the value, and they purchased it for much less than we had it valued at. And so I told him, you know, I'd have to see it for myself and went over there. And yeah, I saw, okay, it was, he was on the fence of whether, you know, I'm going to just tear this down and, and build something else or, you know, what I can do. And I, there were a couple of things there that looked like he'd already kind of invested into the new stuff he was going to put in. But I mean, I was on the second floor and I was like shaking the beams and everything, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and so, uh, but I, I assumed that it would be, have gotten looked at by RRG who's doing all of our inspections. And so I was talking to David and asked him, and he was like, yeah, no, I don't think so. And so I went and looked up the permit and saw that we had a permit for windows. Mm -hmm. And so- You can only go on what they provide. Yeah, and so that, you know, mm -hmm. right. And so, okay, there's, mm -hmm. like I said, when I was there, it was way beyond windows and the mm -hmm. windows were still in there and the windows weren't being touched. The description also indicated some- renovations as well yeah and so the that just makes me feel like you know now and something like that i might not go to when i have got a you know 500 permits that i'm looking at and it's okay like i'm not going to a roof you, you're replacing your roof okay i don't really need to go and see is it a different material i'm going to change it in my system but i'm not going to go out to every place and look it says windows the roof. you're not going to go to every place it says right, windows, says windows because... i might not go because it's uh -huh. just the windows and if that's all that's happening but you know what i, I guess i yeah, i've got to go to every darn one right. because uh he tell us, us. He, yeah go ahead um he's next and then your turn well you know mark you said Two things that were, were interesting to me. Number one, Rachel caught an inaccuracy between, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, and I know this is a staffing issue, but I'm, I'm raising it at, at you know, I, th I think the accuracy of these permits when, when they get pulled, that's under pain of perjury, isn't it? It is. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> let, let's, let's, Think about how we use that to encourage people to be more accurate. Uh, the second thing is you mentioned that the permit had, had expired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've had permits that are open for five years. Where's where's the how long? I don't know what the what is the how long is it for a building permit? How long does someone have? I did not know this. So a permit, if you don't if you don't start work within six months, uh -huh. the date of the issuance of the permit then the permit is expired void no good you can grant you can <clears throat> file for an extension request an extension typically we give them because sometimes people you know things happen mm -hmm. unforeseen and we try to work with people uh, but if you start work and you leave it for an extended period of time then it expires this one here clearly expired for a long period of time plus he was well outside the scope of the permit sure. permitted work but i i was wondering about the expiration because you know that would be a way to clear a lot of permits and make sure that we've captured all the value yeah and i'm just thinking now we're going to the online permitting with municipality mm -hmm. And um, we're trying to work out all the kinks of that now ahead of time. And it would be very good if we made sure, you know, Fernando had said, especially if we have any kinks, it's good to do it now. Um, what else could be mm -hmm. on there on the front of that as they're getting the permit? Make sure to include every something that you're doing on this. Otherwise, like, you know, is there any language in there that's like in big bold letters or could we change the font or the color of that to make sure that everybody really, because this has been a problem. You told me about another 
uh, uh, person who will remain nameless that you had gone to this place before because I gave a tip, hot tip. I said, <laughs> well, how's this one going? Because there have been like three people out there for however long. And this in this builder was known to him to have underestimated on something. So what is there anything that we could do with the municipality part of that to be looking, you know, even the the font or the letters mm. to make sure that this you have to include every blah 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 on the permit. Under in a perjury. You mean the, the detailed description of the work? Yeah. In a perjury. I mean Yeah. We always think people are trying to provide the detailed description of the work that they're doing. If we feel at the time of submittal, when we look at the application, if things aren't lining up or make sense, then we certainly ask questions and mm -hmm. we try to address it there and then. But I will tell you that a lot of people, they start a project with this in mind and all of a sudden it's added to. Um because they figure they're doing the work, they might as well, they, you know. And while we're at it. The yeah, contractors, so. of course, trying to say, well, you know, for just this much more, I could do this. Well, yeah, contractors, but contractors actually are good because they they have a license at stake. Yeah. So right. uh, they don't want to lose their license because of one project. So it's typically the homeowners that, and I'm not saying the contractors don't. I'm not saying that because uh, some do, but um, the bigger problem is with the property owners. I just had one today. Actually, that's where I was earlier. Uh, <laughs> you were late, right? Driving by and here's all this drywall and framing material. People just bought the house, wanted to start fixing up areas, no permits. Didn't realize Good they needed for a you. Didn't so, realize they This is worth being late about. Okay, so, that was very good. Yeah. You don't need so, a lot of you know, so. we're out there, we're trying to address these situations, but you know, we have limited staff and right. yeah. uh we can't cover everything, but we do make every attempt to to do our job. How many times do, do you investigate each permit? You know what I mean? Is it you mean investigate or inspect? Or inspect or yeah, I guess it depends on the type of project. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, and so there's some that, like this, might, you know, well, I think it's for great. Since this particular situation that I'm just referring to, mm -hmm. it's going to require two inspections a framing one once he gets done framing, and then a final. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So, but when it was just the initial permit and what it was for. Oh, you're talking about the the Well Street one? Yes. Oh, that one would have been framing. That probably could have been two framing because it probably wouldn't have passed the first time. Right. And then uh, insulation. Oh, and then a final. It was, yeah, because it was gutted right but, down the But side. it wasn't that way when they took it out. It was just windows. So you didn't know you had to do 12 inspections. So here is the yeah. so here is the description. And what we try to do is we write the description just like it's written on the permit application so that there is no room for error. This is what they wrote. This is what we write for description. To replace windows, 0.30. U factor and some wall renovation, addition of a bedroom. So wall renovations, a lot of times you have plaster walls, mm -hmm. they fall down. So people want to take the plaster off and put up drywall. So typically that's that type of situation or they may just put drywall over the plaster. Depends on the situation. The addition of a bedroom, that would trigger an upgrade of smoke alarms okay. throughout that unit. Uh, the code says is when you add a bedroom, uh, you, you're upgrading the smoke alarms to hardwire with battery backup. So that was the description that was provided to us. And obviously, there was a lot more work going on there. He mm -hmm. pretty much gutted out the whole, the entire building, both floors. And he's doing structural work and all that. So, right. so mm -hmm. prime example of this is how it started. And you see what's out there now. Right. I would just like to say, from my observation of reading these build, building permits, that, that would be a tip off because they give an awful lot of information about the U factor on the windows. We have more information that you would need. To, well, I did not know that either. But all this information, I said, I saw one that started with the windows, and I'm sure it was probably a $300,000 one because I know where it was. 
And then it was expansion of living area. <clears throat> and I'm like, I never, you know, I'm like, I wonder how big that was. And there's something that was done to the carriage house. And I thought, I'm, so it, it is, those windows could be really just interesting. Go ahead. I, I guess two questions. You, you mentioned that some contractors do X. Uh-huh. You know who they are. Mm -hmm. How about yes. warning letters? Let's slap their hands, or let's let's threaten to slap their hands. I mean, what we if people play by the rules, mm -hmm. there's no problem. People that don't play by the rules cause problems, and and maybe there is a way of saying you're on our radar. Well, be careful. Yes. Well, this more so than a. So this is what I would be thinking. I'm going down next Tuesday, right, to all of the building inspectors to talk about, because this was fabulous what Rachel brought out, brought, brought up what came from your department. And that, I mean, I have a tip off because I know one. I know one who would write a window or addition of an egress. Mm -hmm. An egress could be a whole lot. Why are you making another egress? Who has to get out of that egress? Yeah, sure. So. So um, if you have one example of one person, you know, this is a person with, because that one that I brought to your attention mm -hmm. was significant. Mm -hmm. And then you told me about how significant the other one was, because it does, that has been a known something. It's been, that has happened here in the past. And I can tell you that word egress is like, was it they're, at, they're at another apartment. Right. You're not making an egress upstairs for nobody. You don't just jump out of the window. I mean, out of the door. So I, I think it's important, the language is met. And, and so I'm going to go down. And I don't know about, you You want people to continue to do that. But if you're, if to continue to be doing all their building, but it could be an internal something. Mark, Mark is, you know, an internal memo whatever. If you have seen something once, it might happen again. I don't really know about that. Yeah, but, but I, I guess I guess my point is we want to encourage people to play by the rules. Okay. And if we know people True. that have not played by the rules, number one, we ought to alert them to that. And we had, we had a situation, uh, you know, and, and you all know about uh, this one that was by a prominent... Yes. Right. And it seems to me that when people who should know better do that, do that sort of thing, they own multiple properties. Yes. We look at all the properties exactly. automatically. Yep. The, uh, the point how, is, how would we do that? Well, now this gets to my second point, and that is, you, you remember we had a discussion a long time ago mm -hmm. about commercial. You know, in in a business, the last group you screw around with are the people that help you generate revenue, the salespeople. And anybody who helps the city generate revenue ought to be staffed properly. Right. Exactly. Uh, I'm on it. You see, don't, <laughs> nobody's pointing the pen at me. No, 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 no. I, I was pointing we're, the pen at him we're, we're just to let him know that we're, I heard. This is why we're here. <laughs> this is why we're here. And now we're going to go to Randy next, who's going to be reporting on this new growth that's coming in his department. This is our revenue stream. As I've said to you, this is very funny. Because I will say things, Randy knows. I said, don't tell anybody else. This is my favorite department that I'm talking to. Um, I'm, I'm talking to Mark, and I said, and you too. I said, my mother would say things like this. I was the best duster until she died. We found out that she told everybody else they were the best duster. But at any rate, our <laughs> revenue stream producing, we cannot survive um, without <clears throat> increasing the revenue here, which means we have to capture all of it. And I'm going to go on to, uh, a and you saw that we added to yes, assessing yeah, this yeah. year, yeah. knowing that this is revenue producing. I'm already thinking about this. I, I, yes, I was no, not accusing no, no, you. No, it's like, anyway. <laughs> it is, we, we can't do this unless every single thing is inspected. I'd be out there myself if I could. Now, why don't you go on and tell us about um, the uh, personal RRC and how they're doing, et cetera. Any, any reports that are coming from you? I didn't mean to single that one out. Any no, that's fine. And, um, that's one of the things that we're waiting for. 
all the data entry has been done, or part of me, all the inspections have been done, but it's the data entry that's getting finished up. And I expect to be contacted by them very soon. I'm hoping, you know, that it's not going to be long before they're done because they're aware that we're going into classification. Right. And then that's part of what we're going to be reporting. So, yeah, I'm waiting to hear back. I checked with them and that was the update that I got about a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm anticipating a, a communication soon. And if not, then I'll be doing my own asking for an update. But, um, yeah, that should be coming to an end or, or, you know, getting to the finish line soon, I would think. Mm -hmm. And so then we should be set personal property wise, but, um, you know, this example brings up, uh, you know, just another reinforcement of uh, wanting to increase the staff or make sure that we have adequate staff to look at every permit. So mm -hmm. yeah, in the past, I'm, I'm eliminating 40% of the, the permits because it's just not, in my opinion, a value changer. Mm -hmm. But I I don't think I have that luxury anymore. And until I feel confident that okay, yes, I'm wasting my time going to these. I'm gonna we're gonna expand what we're we're going to every place. I guess you know because if it's a windows, then I you know I I need to see, and and it's just um, I I can't. I'm not saying that every homeowner or everyone that takes out a permit is not honest, but there's so many out there that um, are using a slush factor or whatever you want to call it to say, okay, yes, I got a permit for this, but you know, I need to know exactly what's going on. And so the only way I'm going to know is by having sufficient staff and getting out there and doing an inspection. So are there any municipalities that you know of that, that the assessor goes out with the building inspector? Uh, there are some, but it's, um, it's depending on the size of the municipality, it's difficult to coordinate. Um, okay. A, a lot of times it's with, you know, there's just something that you do with the fire inspector or on the final inspection, they're going in to do the smoke alarms and, and that type of thing. And, and that's when, but even then it's, it's a touchy situation. And do we have the permission of a homeowner? I think you brought that up, but we would have to have something, have them sign something saying, I'm coming out to inspect and the assessor is going to accompany me. So I'd rather not Piggyback. If I if, huh. if I could and it was more efficient, I'd love to do it. But at the same time, I don't want to hinder someone contact building inspector or the the fire chief uh, because they're apprehensive about having the assessor come along. So I wonder if there are other. I wonder when you ask for that information. Remember the thing you were going to send out to all of your the, the people in assessing. Yes. Okay. Could you ask on the same thing if there are any. Because I could run that by legal. You could have that in the building. You could have it in a building per permit, something like when inspections happen. If it's not against, it's not le if it's not legal, we wouldn't do that. But there, there may be, maybe that's done in other municipalities. I would understand the coordination part of that. We are working on that just for everyone's FYI. For problematic, we have a, a few, a couple of problematic uh, multi- families or two families right now and we are asking for coordinated efforts between fire police health and building to go out because the, the neighbors of these you know couple of problematic um houses uh not your care one. one oh there you go <laughs> we'll, we'll have more on that right after <laughs> Um, <laughs> because because the way to get to that is together, and so I don't. I wonder if there's language in other municipalities all that have run by somebody else had the hand up. Go ahead. Um, is there a difference between residential and commercial in terms of the things we're discussing? Because it was a stark when we were talking to EDC about um, the split, the potential for doing a split. We pointed out that there is a, a market, there's three times as much residential value as there is commercial. Oh, absolutely. And one of the reasons is not because there's not a lot of commercial properties, but they're all very low value. Yep. And it seems like if any commercial properties are doing any kind of permits, then it should be a, a light bulb going off of maybe this property. Because even if markets, the market rate is saying that all these commercials are low value, um, we can also do it based on the replacement cost and the income. 
And if the permitting is showing that some of these vacant or underused commercial properties are actually being rehabbed and are in good shape, um, then we can look at the income um, if they get any tenants and we can value them a lot higher, even though the market rates are low. Well, you, you created an Excel sheet mm -hmm. that showed permits, mm -hmm. the estimated cost of the permits, the values, what progress has been made on that Excel sheet to address those properties? Because that was a, an extensive list. And there was a lot of permits on there with a lot of money value. Yeah, and you went down them, if I recall. You and David we, went to... Um, Harold and I inherited oh, a few of those properties, yes. A um, few? Yeah, a few. So not as many as are on the list. And actually, I'd talk to you guys about... Um, working that list because on the list there's some things that are legitimate things that we need to look at and then there's some things that when you look into them you can understand why it's in in the well, there were errors that and so that really needs to be worked by somebody to say okay here's where we should concentrate our efforts because here's where i think you know from looking at things the value is definitely a miss and we should you know so here we are talking about new growth revenue and here was a good starting point with that Excel sheet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in my opinion. I could be wrong, but in my opinion, that was a good starting point. Mm -hmm. And I think that you would see a difference once you get through that entire list. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you wouldn't do the entire list because the entire list was just everything. I just sorted it. But um, no, you sorted at, it out with the I, growth. I, uh, I just gave you the top. Yeah, you just gave us the, yeah. Down yeah. to like 50%. Yeah, we're so more than fifty percent of the value. Right. Yeah, and that's what um, that's what you and Harold had been working down. If I remember. Right. So we we got the the things that we thought were sticking out the worst that were the best potential for us to pick up in growth, where we thought the value was just not correct. And so yeah, we did. We hit a bunch of those properties, but the list is still there, and it's not just that list, but another one that we did of, of the price per square foot. So we have a couple of ways to work. Uh, work to look for some of these things that are out there that aren't adequate but it again it comes down to staffing and i get that and i don't mean to put anybody on no, the spot I here, wasn't but, like but it's but it's a oh. starting point mm -hmm. you know here we're talking about permits and things well you've got the data from permits that mm -hmm. haven't been acted on yeah and well. that's that's what i have said so, before is so i think that's where line. we have to start but it, it has been acted on and, and in fact i mean if you want to get to brass tacks there were some errors in there and some of the things were in that list, as Randy said, they weren't actually, there was actually nothing going on. It was just, you know, the errors were making it pop to the top. And, the, you know, it's not like there were hundreds of those. There were a few. But again, that's why we need to work the list and, um, and stay on top of, which is why, you know, we need that adequate staff, at least in this department, so that we, we have the manpower to go and, and capture this stuff. And so, yeah, it's been going on for a long time, too. It's not just this isn't we're not talking about something that's just only happened in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And so that's what these other lists of uh, the permit stuff and the, the other one that I did that was comparing a price per square foot is a way, way to identify, um, you know, these. But again, it's it's time consuming and someone needs to look at each one individually and then make the call mm -hmm. whether we're sending someone out or not. We, we also have the tip line which is so far still just a spreadsheet of my computer. Um, but we have a lot of really diligent residents. And I, as I, we talked uh, some months ago, you have your own tip line. People call in and mm -hmm. say, hey, people are doing work. Um, so this is another, another set of good stuff that we have the opportunity to work through as well. I'll give you another example, which I told you this morning. Uh, I was in an area the other day, excavator there, and I'm like, it's a pretty big hole. I, I remember a building there. <laughs> Come to find out, they tore down a 900 square foot building and without any true. permits. Well, I didn't think I needed a permit. And the following day, they came in with a permit application to rebuild. Wow. I just happened to be there. So she could give the number to the Y. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So I you have a I, question I know, actually for Mark. to me. Um, it, it, it's, to forgive me, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it seems to me that we're, we're talking about how you take a list, long list that will exceed all um, 
uh, available resources and then deal with it in an orderly fashion where you're capturing the high growth, high, you know, the high value stuff first. And I didn't hear a separation of we have residential, we have commercial. Within these, there are priorities, you know, high value. And it, it seems to me that high value commercial takes precedence over high value residential. Well, well I, and as we work that yeah. list, we can we can take those factors into account and, right. into how we're working at what we're looking at first. Yeah. So I, I think just being able to articulate what the priority order is would be very helpful. I just want to make that. a quick comment that high value commercial is not a thing. There's like three or four high value commercials. But the problem is because the market for commercial properties is so crappy, you can have large facilities that are valued very low. And they don't pop up. some of the recent sales of our commercial properties weren't the sale. I don't know how to say, explain this, but they weren't for the sale of the whole commercial property. It was like the business part of it mm -hmm. and not the whatever. So it actually hid the factor of what it is. But I have a question so that for that pertains to some of the things that's going on now with our, when we talked about housing, housing, housing. And the value, so like a light in woods, the value of something that is, if it has uh, low income housing units, affordable housing units, how that is going to affect in the end, because there are people that are coming forward to the mayor with all of their plans for whatever it is. And I, while we're in this meeting, and we can take this up at another time, but I hear conflicting information about what the value of, say, a commercial property is going to be when it has what percentage of, uh, you know, either low, affordable, income, housing units. Is there any magic formula for that? And we can take that up at the next meeting if you want, but I'm curious about it when people are always saying, I hear two different things on it. Well, you said commercial, but that's residential. Well, no, no, they're, they're commercial, I think it's a commercial property right now. That, that was why I said that it could be a commercial property or any parcel where you're going to build, where you're going to build housing. Is the value of the, the, the value of the real estate affected by what's inside of it? Is, did, did that make any sense? Like, does it matter? It, it does, and it goes according to the criteria of the people that are going in there and the, you know, percentage of area media and income that they need to qualify. So it might be a restricted value. It would still be taxable. But similar to solar way, it's not something that we just sell on the open market. And then we would try and have things closer to that value. No, it has to be. There's a deed rider on it that allows only a certain percentage of it and an increase in growth. And so that is basically keeping that value low for the circumstances of that. Okay. Community. So, so if you build something that we're just going to use as an example, it's 20 units and 50% of them are below uh you know, 20% uh, of the affordable mean income. It's 20 unit, brand new apartment building. And half of them are, are whatever that 20% of the AMI, is the, the, the term, mm -hmm. okay, so 10 units. It's a brand new building. Is that gonna be as valuable as a 20 unit building that's market rate? No, it would What's be less difference? than that. It's yeah. going to be according to the discount sort of that they're getting would, according would, to the situation. Would their discount be like 50%? percent um, It depends on the circumstances of the situation. Be because... And it's probably not a good term to you discount. It's probably not a good term. Well, it's, well, if the value is not less. Not accurately describing. Is there a formula? Is there like a formula that I could... Um, I can Isn't see what I can do to uncover that. Isn't this... You know, part of it is, income? yeah, but it's also it's the income piece of it is uh, the to qualify to whether you're allowed to stay there or not. I meant but the income of the property. Um, yeah, 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 that's that's, that's tied into there too. So yeah. you have to look to see what it's going to be long term. Yeah, and is that, that income because it's going to be reduced because of the circumstances of the renters, then it's also going to 
have the same effect on your value, which sure. is likely reduced, not 100%. Okay, go ahead. Quick question. Do you track affordability deed restrictions and their expiration? Um, or is I, a... Has it been done here? In the, should it be done? Yes. Okay. Has it been done here in the past to a small extent? Um, and I just, where we had uh, applications for abatement from Solar Way, that whole complex, yeah, I'm on top of that now and I know exactly where they should be. And uh, actually, I even have additional work to do on that with one of the residents there who was formerly like the president of the association and has a ton of info. Okay. Um, and she was very good about helping and, and volunteering to help us get a good handle on different improvements that have been made and, and just uh -huh. make sure that we have all of our, our values and the information about what's in each unit accurate. Okay. Anything, do you have anything else on that? Because I know this is something that came up with me be, before, but it's important where there will be new things that are coming. Like, you know what I mean? There are new things that are coming and that's a good thing. It's all good. And it's it's something that I, I should know um, because sometimes people, they, they might, you know, if they're coming for a letter for this or a letter for that, is that you just need to know what it's going to be in the and and I don't know that I couldn't find that anywhere. And I um, I've been very busy. Oh no! <laughs> I, I want to get you that information at another time. time. We'll do that at another yeah. time. Um, so I have another question for yeah. Mark. Actually, mm -hmm. it has to do with permits. You know, so you have someone that comes in and gets a permit, and you you know then you find out okay you know this is totally inappropriate mm -hmm. and you, you, you know it doesn't cover half of what you're actually doing. Can you impose a penalty? Is there any way that you could say, hey, you know, if you if you're caught doing something, this is what's gonna happen to you. And $100. then a hundred dollars. Okay. First offense is a hundred dollars, second offense is five hundred, third offense is a thousand. Yeah, okay. So there is a little bit of something out there because it sort of seems like we have to, you know, there has to be a consequence for your actions if you get caught. And then they need to hear that, hey, some people have been got, got caught. And, and this is what happened to them. So that and overall, I'm thinking that everyone will say, oh, hey, you know, people are getting busted in Greenfield if you're not, you know, if you're not doing everything the way you're supposed to. Is and that a state mandated amount? I'm sorry. What's is that, that a state mandated amount or? It's a non-criminal civil violation in the state oh, building okay, code. Get that. They tell us what violations we can cite and what fine we can impose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when was the last time those fees were adjusted? Has it been a hundred dollars since you've been a building inspector, for instance? No, actually, those fines did not come into play until the acts of two thousand and four, after the station Rhode Island Club okay. fire. Oh yeah. Oh, before okay. that, there were never any fines. So, but after that, they gave us a list of uh, violations that we could cite. Yeah. Okay. They have increased the number of violations that we can cite, but they haven't increased the fines. Yeah. Okay. And, and and there's no I'm sorry there's no state wide system to keep track so if somebody does you know work without oh her right in yeah in a different town, town then you yeah if you you know, they could find them a hundred dollars they come to Greenfield we would find them a hundred dollars yeah whereas if there was a statewide system and you said hey you know you're over no. in Amherst and you did this and guess what yeah. Yeah. well wow. you know, we can't solve that problem I was just curious. Because yeah. it seems like that's what needs to happen. Sounds like there's a lot of things that are getting done without the sufficient or accurate permit. But I, I do want you to know that when we do go out into the field for inspections and we do come across work that has been done uh, outside the scope of their permit, there's one of two ways that we can handle it. We can either have them amend the current permit to include that and pay the difference in the fee or will ask for a separate permit, depending on the situation. Yeah, okay. And so, for instance, like, you know, I because I'm looking at all the sales from 2023 right now, I'm finding a lot of unpermitted work. And I've brought them oh, to your no doubt. before. So what can we do about that? It's, and so that's kind of, I'm not bringing your attention anymore because it's more just frustrating to hear that someone else got away with it, you know? <laughs> but like, what can we... We're out there every day and we yeah. stop and we... But uh, like, yeah, and so and it's tough across. too, because it's not like we could, you know, how do we, you know, get across yeah, the people right. that are doing it, you know, that you can't do it and slap them on the wrist somehow, because we don't find out about it until after they already sold it. And so they're long gone with the money in their pocket and they're laughing all the way to the bank. And in the meantime, mm -hmm. you know, we have no recourse to, mm -hmm. to get any type of financial Mark just justice. filled his other, is that a half 
uh, position. It's a part time position. Part time yes. position. So he he did that, and we're going to be on top of that, like we have been on top of you. You know, I like I don't mean on top of, but helping mm -hmm. to make sure because if you're not making it, you can either tighten your budget that hasn't seemed to work, or you can increase the growth, which is why we're here. Uh, yeah. Uh, go ahead. And, and just just a quick question: those those fines that are imposed, they're imposed on homeowners or contractors. Is that right? Correct. The implication. We're a little more lenient with homeowners, right? First offense, like like today, the homeowner that right. I found, he just purchased the house. In his mind, it was a little project. It was nothing structural, so he didn't need a permit. Mm -hmm. So we do a little educating while we're there to explain when permits are required. And we ask for a permit, and there, there won't be a fine in this particular case. But, but if he doesn't get his permit in, then there will be a fine, and it'll be a stop work order. Well, what, but what occurs to me is that contractors that get fined ought to be treated differently than contractors mm -hmm. that don't get fined or even differently from uh, homeowners who get fined. If they're licensed contractors, they're That's getting fined. Mm -hmm. I yeah. said, if they're a licensed contractor, they're getting fined. I, 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 I got that. But there, there is also the potential that they could lose their license if they screw around some yeah. more. Mm -hmm. So somebody who you know, want, wants to game the system can get a, a, a first violation for this permit, a first violation for that permit. For instance, this garage that or this structure that was taken down the other day, yeah. the guy's not licensed. So I can't file a complaint against his license. No, I, I understand. But I'm I don't not, care if you're not the license. Yeah. Because they can't well, take it away from you. But my, my, my point is that I'm, I'm coming from the point where contractors who should know better mm -hmm. and uh, don't, uh, you know, don't behave appropriately ought to be treated differently. They ought to be singled out in some way that encourages, you know, good behavior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they're licensed that encourages the good behavior. And it's the people that don't have the licenses that are the problem. No, I understand. I, but <laughs> but one, one, of, one of the problems here is, you know, we throw everything into a bucket. But everything in the bucket is different, and and you want to figure out how to parse it mm -hmm. so that you get the the best bang for the buck. And and I, it, it seems to me that if if contractors, you know, they they could lose their license from because they've gotten fined multiple times. You know, I, I mean, it seems. Well, I I haven't fined anybody yet a thousand dollars. There's been one five hundred dollars. So that's the second offense. The third offense will be a thousand. But but is it on the? It, it's within the the city. The first mm -hmm. offense in the city. The second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But but you do know people that, you know, uh, game the system, and and maybe they ought to be warned that they shouldn't be doing this, because we've got you on our radar. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, it right. does. But you can yeah. tell them. But on the next job, you may find that they're in compliance. So they well, that's not. great. That, that's great. Uh -huh. But you're watching them like a hawk. That's my point. Well, anyway. We are watching. Right. We're so we're going to... Um, Sorry. No, no, that's it's very good. This is why we're here. I want to know from you, when do you think we, we, we went to two months on this? Do mm -hmm. you feel that we should go two months or three months before we have our next one of these? And does everybody want to be here? If anybody feels like they should, I know I can tell by watching the room, you know, like who, whatever. It, but I, I just want to like put this out to the group. We have been doing every couple of months, and we went to ninety minutes. Is that what we think is a good idea, or do you want it to go every three, or what should we be doing? What do people think that are here? Um, well, uh, I just want to point out the assessing calendar mm -hmm. um, okay. because we have this very important classification meeting coming up. And some of the stuff we talk about might be relevant. Um, for example, again, the apartment buildings aren't commercial, but all these businesses, right? All the mm -hmm. mainstream businesses, and they have almost no value. Mm -hmm. There's like no value. And I can't believe none of them are pulling permits. And it would be great to find out these things before you know, because we're trying to make these decisions in classification about owner occupied and about split rates. And we need to know where this is going. So, I, I mean, where, where what it's going, where the yeah, values, the, the development of new growth and value is coming from. 
It, it just seems to me that our calendar, is there, uh, Randy, are there other things in our calendar that you think should suggest we meet earlier or at a certain time? Um, you know, we have to get past classification and then billing. So that would be, you know. Oh, so you want to wait till after the meeting to do yeah. this stuff mm -hmm. so that we can get our statutory stuff done first. Yeah, we have to. I mean, that's our priority right now. And the city's pretty much under, uh, you know, we have a lot going on. <laughs> and Randy, even in his, um, I just like to give a shout out there for people helping each other. Um, your uh, department here has got senior, you know, whatever in okay. finance, and they've been extraordinarily helpful, not only to the mayor, but to everyone else when I go down and ask something. So there's a lot here with a lot of changes and everyone's working together, um, which I really appreciate. You know that. I hope you know that. I'd like to shout out to you, too. Thank you. For taking into account uh, the staffing needs of the revenue generating departments. Right. Right. Because we can't get to the finish line without that. I thought, right. That's what they said. If your budget isn't working, you can either cut your budget or find out a new way. So that's what we're on right now. It's why we are. And everybody's doing a good job. I just want you to know we're all we're all working very hard, but we just can't miss anything. So I'm going to go down with Tuesday at, uh, at the Tuesday morning at nine and, and be talking with our other building inspectors. We have a new person, Rachel. Tell them about this meeting. Because, you know, we, you know, you, everybody feels like a cog in the wheel. You know, I, I, I don't know what everybody feels like. I know what I feel like. <laughs> but um, but you might not know what the what a picture is. But I thought this is, like I said, everybody, I thought, oh, this is, th these departments, they produce the revenue. You want to have, you, you know, you, uh, you want to get another fire engine and have the firefighters? We can't do that without the growth. We can't do that with missing things. And, but, um but everybody in the, on a team doesn't know, and especially when we're separated. You know, like we're separated, and it, it, they're in a whole. It's a whole other building. I wish that everybody was together in one big building, um, so that one hand would know what the other one was doing. But do you think ninety minutes is a good time, or should we tr make it to an hour? Do you think we need ninety minutes? I just like to make sure we're setting this up again. Um. Well, well, I think that we've been taking less and less time with each meeting. Okay. Yes, yeah. we've covered a lot. Right. Um, and we're making progress, really, I think. Okay. And so this is an hour and a half. Yeah. And we're right on that mark. I said, let, let's keep it an hour and a half for next time. And okay, an hour and a half. If we find we'll we're done early, do then we'll yeah. we'll start cutting them back. Okay. And and you don't, I don't mean to put anybody on the spot. If you're coming to this and don't think it's valuable for you and your department, you can let me know. I'm not putting anybody on the spot by saying that. I can see that we need to talk with each other. Well, I don't know how we would have done it without Erin. I, I contribute everything all the time. It's incredible. <laughs> she does. <clears throat> she really, and- well, we um, appreciate it. It might not necessarily be the best use of your yeah. time. So yeah, and anyone, we have the meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. And so you could review what was discussed and then um, have right. comments or ask a question or attend the next meeting right. if you wanted to. Right. What I'd like to say is, is if you or your other staff out there can you come across one like you did on well street give us a call because mm -hmm. we don't hit all of them right. yeah this okay one just happened that was, to, that was, was great this one happened to this was like fall right into place showing yeah. this is our show yeah, and tell we were, for the, we were all over for the we're, different we're, ones and it was a you know because we've seen other ones where it looked like oh this would be a garage you know someone's making a little garage and instead it's a whole little house well in the same way the other way around if, mm -hmm. if you come across something where it's not at all what they permitted Tell us right away. And I have. Yeah, well, yeah. and that just comes down to to making sure we visit every permit. You know, There's one on Loomis Road that kind of sticks out on my mind uh, because uh, okay. I was called there by the fire department. This was a few years ago uh, because of the conditions of the building. A um, gentleman was uh, taken out on stretcher. And unfortunately, he never came back home. And the house was turned over to relatives. And uh, they renovated the complete house without any permits. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I found out about it was because the fire department, they went to sell the property. Uh, the fire department called me 
because he happened to be there the same time I was, and he knew what the condition was, and he didn't see any records of permits. So he wanted to know what was going on. Well, I contacted the owner slash realtor at the time, and I cited him for work without a permit, and they sold the place and moved to Pennsylvania. <laughs> mm -hmm. What am I going to do with that? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I told the assessor's office that this property had been completely renovated. Um, so we do pass it along. That was the purpose of that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. That we do pass along. Mm -hmm. But I can't go to Pennsylvania. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and the yeah. person back, isn't going to uh, work as closely or be concerned as, you know, as working together with the building inspector to make sure that we're catching every property either. Yes. Yeah. When we're doing it in house, it's going to be a better situation to talk about that. There's another one where uh, it was vacant. We went to check on it the other day and there was dirt being thrown out the foundation. Yes. Yeah. Half the foundation was missing. Come to find out that uh, there was two permits that were applied for, but they were withdrawn. And now there's work going on without permits and half the foundation wall is gone and the two-story building is completely gutted. Mm -hmm. So we stopped and spoke with the gentleman Mm -hmm. issued a stop work order and he said that's fine but he says i'm coming back after you leave so you know he was educated that that probably wouldn't be the right thing to do because he's subject to uh fines hundred dollars first time five hundred yeah. then a thousand so you know we run into challenges just because we're the building inspector where right. you know we don't have a magic wand we run into these difficulties and challenges so, no, that's why I was asking about the fines, you know, if it was a percentage or something like that, it's not just, you know, it's, you know, it's two cents and okay, so you're here. You go. Um, but just before we go, I want to say that we said we would have public comment at the end of that's the meeting. That's true. Oh, yes, I, I, oh, sorry. Thank I'm you. going to make a motion to open public comment. Second. Open. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Stephanie, Aye. you've been very patient. It's your opportunity to ask questions. Hi, I'm, I can't believe you guys are still going to let me talk. Um, I did have a couple of questions when I was hearing all of you guys talk about um, the permits. Um, Speak up a little bit, Stephanie, and I'm I'm going, but everyone else is listening. Okay. okay. Yes. okay. Can you hear me so, okay? Can, can, you can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So are open permits transferable to new owners? Should they be closed out prior to so that if there is work that happens, like say on a foreclosure or a flip, that we're capturing it, you know, maybe they had an open permit pulled on the other one, they decided to, you know, it was way too much work, but they went, um, you know, sold off that unit, that permit didn't get closed out, the uh, person coming in knows it's, you know, they're aware of the work that needs to happen, uh, you know, maybe a particular seller would say, oh, don't worry about that, I pulled that permit. And now it's been years and we didn't, you know, know that all of, you know, the conversions that were happening in these multifamilies were happening. And how do we address, um, you know, new, new ADUs? Do we go out and just assess the value of the ADU? Do we um, then reassess the entire property, including the additional house? I mean, the, the original house. Um, also, uh, do we get a foreclosure report um, or, so that we can kind of be aware, like, hey, maybe not only did they, maybe they lost it for taxes or, the, you know, I, I guess we're not doing that anymore, but things foreclosed because of mortgage companies. But are we getting a report to know that, hey, this is foreclosed on, maybe there's some transition that's going to happen and we can capture that money, you know, somewhere, at least it's on our radar to capture some money, even if we, you know, maybe at a tickler list or something, a trigger list that says, hey, we know this got foreclosed on. In order for it to be occupied, significant building permits need to be pulled, and that's money we capture. But if, I, I'm think I'm thinking you could probably park on Chapman Street for a little while, but <laughs> I just wanted to make, uh, you know, you know, just thoughts about how we can capture money um by closing permits that were on houses that may have needed work and recapturing that money once somebody new purchases that and then needs to do the construction 
Thanks. You, uh, Stephanie, sorry, you, you mentioned money. Are you talking value or money from fees? Both. <laughs> well, the, fee, the fees, you know, they don't amount to, to very much in the scheme of things. The valuation is the, the major issue. So I'm just trying to separate out where, where your concerns are or what, what you were referring to. Um, I think I well, Did you? Oh, okay. Then. So does um, Mark, Mark, if if a house sells and there's an open permit, does, it, does that get closed or would it just stay open? Well, the building department doesn't know when properties are for sales so, or when they're sold. When they're sold. However, buyers are getting smarter and more and more buyers are contacting the building department to, to see what permits have been obtained for work in the past. Mm -hmm. So the buyers are helping out with that. Uh, but is it 100%? No. I could give you, I don't know if you have the manpower to process it, but I could give you a list of what was sold every month or, you know, quarterly or, or however. And then you could, you know, if you had, like I said, the manpower, then you could go back into municipality and, and see if there's any open permits and close them because it's a new owner now or something like that. I don't know. And that's labor that intensive. Be, yeah, and I don't okay. have and so, yeah. staff to do that. Yeah. And so I could. And it's, it's up to, it. it's the responsibility <laughs> of the permit holder to contact the yeah, inspections yeah. department for inspections. Yeah. And that's uh, what our biggest and, problem, I think, is that all the things that we're not responsible for that are costing us value. <laughs> so I don't have the answer. Yeah. But I don't have no, the staff I mean, to do that. Oh, yeah. Even if I, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, sorry. No, that's okay. I understand. I just thought, you know. So just so I understand, Mark, are you saying that um, if somebody pulls a permit, then sells the house, they are supposed to pull a new pull, pull a new permit? Are they supposed to pull a new permit, a new owner? Or well, can the permit continue? Is, my understanding is, is that uh, the permit was pulled under this ownership. The work was done. Now the property is sold, but the permit remains open. That was my understanding of the question. Yeah, no, yes. But my question to you is, can the permit still be open with a new owner and they can still do that work? No. So they have permits, to get permits a permit. Permits transferable. Got it. Yeah, okay. So there's, yeah, the permit ends when the ownership changes. So the sale and open permit, if we can match that, I mean, first of all, let's match it and see how many cases we're talking about. Mm -hmm. in, our, I mean, in what type of cases? Yeah, Are you well, talking that, about windows and siding? Yeah, no, no, no. Are you I, talking I, about renovations right. and additions? Fine. But you know, just so, any any so, time, because they... <laughs> Right when a sale happens, everything, any permit should be closed because if the work's not done, then the place isn't safe. I mean, it's not. Well, you, yeah. well not necessarily. It's not safe. It depends on the work. Yeah, depending you on. Know, if you're putting in a new window, I wouldn't say, you know, leaving an old window there doesn't automatically make the building unsafe. Yeah. But it sounds like that list that Randy could produce might be useful. I know you don't yeah. have the staff to look at it, but it sounds like it could be useful. Right. Well, I just, just. Comparing the two and saying, here are the sales, here are the open permits, you know, and just taking a look at them. How about a senior worker? If we had a senior worker, that uh, would like have mine too. Yeah. Oh, you guys have one too? Yeah, they always use one. Do, do, do they have rights to be in municipality? Because we could give that senior worker a list and say, hey, just go and anything on this address, these addresses, close it or something like that. I don't know. Clerical work. Just trying to think, because, yeah, it's the stuff that you don't have the staff for, but, you know, what are other possibilities? You know, I don't know, just uh, brainstorming. I mean, if you want understand. to send me the list for 23 and 24, I'm just oddly curious, and I should learn how to use Municity. I will go through and just see if we're talking about, like, 700 properties or if we're talking about four. Right. I can right. I can do that just... Well, and that's sort of what I was thinking is that we, we can start talking about it now, start looking at it, and then in a little while, we'll have a better idea of. And I would like the list because I track the sales in my department, too, and I'd like to see if I'm doing it correctly and accurately. Cool. So if you want to send me the list, I can try to whittle it down, and then I can share the volume that we're talking about. That'd be okay. good information. Thanks, Thanks work. <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. We're trying, Seth. I, I, I just wanted to like add one more thing. So okay. I know 
I don't think it's pen, you know it's pennies when maybe we close it maybe, you know we recapture the value but we get it twice if the guy pulls the permit the car suit doesn't work abandons it abandons the property then he flips it for whatever he flips it for and we close out that permit we know that work still needs to happen so bam we get that money back again from the new owner that's coming in that needs to do the work so I mean, I, I know it cuts the legs out of people who are doing, you know, the, the flips to make a lot of money in between. But when those are happening, we're also, the taxpayers are losing a lot of money in between too. So that was just a thought. Thank you so much for letting me speak. Thanks, Steph. Uh, I, uh, I think that's it. Uh, shall we close uh, public comment? I will make a motion to close public comment. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And should we uh, adjourn? I will make a motion to adjourn or to close the meeting. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Thank you all for coming. Uh, recording stopping at 337.